today was the nail in the coffin for me. We had been dating for eight years prior to being married, despite the fact that my wife and I had only been married for four years at the time of this writing. I am 31 years old, and she is 27 years old. I am married, and we have two children. My wife and I have two children, and we are happily married. Before she started working at a new job around two months ago, everything seemed to be going well. She was forced to sleep in the guest bedroom due to insomnia, and she was constantly checking out of our home, so our talks with her were conducted entirely over the phone. She had changed the password on her phone, and we were unable to communicate with her in person. Then, about a month later, I started receiving text messages from a male coworker whom I had never met before. Despite the fact that nothing was discovered, I have a strong suspicion that it had been carried to the location. It was their contention that we were cheating on one another emotionally as much as physically that dominated their discussion. As soon as she learned the truth, she begged and pleaded with me to stay so that we could work it out in marriage counseling together. I agreed. I was in agreement. Despite her best efforts, she was only able to maintain this emotional distance for two days before relapsing into her prior state. I then learned that she had continued to connect with him when I examined our phone records recently, despite the fact that I had set a hard boundary that we would not chat after hours. According to the operator, one or two of these calls came in after midnight and lasted for an hour and a half apiece. Some persons were accurate in asserting that she had been awake for an hour. However, others were incorrect. As far as the immediate future is concerned, I'm through with this project, and I'm just interested in the most promising opportunities that come along. The fact is that when it comes to my own house, I will not serve as a doormat or a backup plan for anybody or anything. Update 1. I found out about my wife's emotional affair last week, and I've been working on myself for the last two months to deal with the situation. She begs me to stay, tears streaming down her face as she expresses her apprehension about tearing our family apart. Following her violation of my clearly established boundaries when I found text messages from a male colleague, followed by phone calls that persisted after I told her to stop, she made the decision to break our family into two halves. The quality of our communication has substantially increased as a consequence of this, and she is now sleeping in the same bed with me and actively fighting for our marriage as well. I'm not sure I'll ever be able to put my confidence in her again. A part of me wants to file a lawsuit right immediately and be done with it, but another part of me wants to at the very least say that we tried counseling for the benefit of the baby and that we were successful. While I'm penning this, I'm realizing that divorce seems to be the only alternative available. I'm most terrified of divorce because I don't want my kid to be harmed by any random person that comes into the house after she leaves. In the event that we didn't have a child, I'd rip the bandage off and call it quits on her. I'm hoping for the best right now, but I'm also preparing myself for the worst. Update 2 I've been living with my STBXW for the last three months after deciding to divorce my ex husband. We have now been scheduled for a court appearance in February. As a result of informing my STBXW of this, she inquires the following day I have a terrible feeling about spending evenings away from the child. Do you think you'd be able to stay until the summer even after the divorce? Moreover, she tried to frame it such that it was advantageous to me, given that the place I'm moving to is farther distant from the baby's day care than my current address, and that I would have to drive greater distances each day in order to get the kid to day care. You should have thought about it before you cheated on me, I tell her. You should have thought about it before you cheated on me, I say. I was given pretty favorable terms in the papers, which we both agreed to sign in a calm manner. There is no child support or alimony, and joint custody is divided equally between the parties. It is now unclear whether I should be honest with her and tell her that I do not plan to stay in that house for any longer than is absolutely necessary, or if I should give her what she wants to hear until I achieve my goals. In the event that I'm completely honest, I'm concerned that my ex-wife would either alter her mind about the divorce agreements or bring false allegations against me. Story 2 My 28 male wife 29 female of 9 years, broke my heart and cheated on me, after all that I put up with and sacrificed for her. I'm absolutely and utterly shattered. I'm a wreck. Whatever happens to this long piece, I just need to get it off my chest because I'm completely broken and have nowhere to turn for help, 
I haven't eaten or slept in three days and haven't been able to function properly. The first time my wife and I met was when we were both 18 years old, and we have been together since then. The course of my life led me face to face with and into the arms of a strikingly beautiful, generous, and kind lady who emanated energy and happiness. We fell in love immediately. We got married within a year of meeting one other, and had our first child not long after that as well. If this free spirit kind of personality were confronted with commitments, I could see right away that he would have a crisis of confidence, kids, houses, etc. When she was sad, she turned to escapism such as smoking, overeating, chatting on her phone all of the time, and other forms of distraction. After a number of years, I grew less judgmental of her and more accepting of her nature, I even began to gravitate toward her, sitting outside with her and watching her play on her phone, hang out with her friends, and so on, until I eventually became friends with her. The daily compliments and affectionate expressions of my wife were a testament to my wife's admiration and love for me. Even after eight or nine years of marriage, she continued to show me both emotional and physical signs of her passion for me, including weird physical ones, like sniffing my body odor and stuff like that, the most of the time, we enjoyed a lovely marriage and a nice home life as a couple together. As a result, during the course of her life, my wife has experimented with a number of techniques to overcome her difficulties. Her college career lasted four years, all of which were extremely intensive. After that, she wanted to be a salesperson, then a nail tech, and finally an online business owner, and during all of those endeavors, she makes little to no money, is constantly on the phone or dealing with something, and she is unable to contribute much around the house as a result of her busy schedule. Being completely candid with you, my willingness to accept it all was motivated by a desire to ensure that the partner I had chosen could finish and pursue his aspirations, I didn't want her to live a life filled with regrets, so I worked extra hard, sometimes working four jobs at the same time, to ensure that she could complete it all successfully. Neither a bachelor's degree nor any special certification was required. I tried to get my BSc in computer science but stopped out after half a year due to the workload being too demanding for her company. It was either her or me, and I picked the latter. She seemed to be experiencing a personal crisis after the failure of her last business and the celebration of her 30th birthday, which I was completely ignorant of until we had a quarrel four weeks ago, according to my perception. When she got home, she exaggerated everything, wouldn't come home, and when she did come home, she would sleep at the coach, shout at me when I talked to her, etc. She was a complete nightmare. Everything, she said, was caused by our relationship, and she complained to me about how I didn't let her do everything she wanted while she was doing it, and that she was still compelled to do certain things as a result of our relationship, yeah, the audacity. After two weeks of her emotionally tormenting me in therapy, she opened up about some of the things that had bothered her in the relationship, and I considered it and promised myself that I would change for her, which I did, and am now working on improving myself on a daily basis. We're still in the throes of counseling right now. As a consequence of my shift, she grew more open to me, but I got the strangest feeling that something wasn't quite right with her. When I turned 30, she offered me the gift of enabling me to sleep with other females if I so wished, which was something she would never have allowed me to do in the previous years of our relationship. I began to be worried because there was one particular guy who worked for her delivery company with whom I saw her communicating on the phone and via text messages on a frequent basis, and this made me feel a little uncomfortable. When I challenged her about it, she reacted with a remark that was quite similar to mine oh, he's the one, isn't he? Isn't he the one? Despite the fact that there is nothing to do, the weather is so hot that you wish you were there instead. When she finally came to me, she told me how much she appreciated and loved my character as a person, as the father of her children, as a parent in general, and so on. Why she couldn't love me as a partner again was beyond her comprehension, what was this nonsense? A person's feelings for the other person do not just melt away as if they were never there in the first place after a relationship is over. She confided in her friend about her love for me, which just served to confirm my fears that something wasn't quite right with her. When I snooped around her phone, I discovered that she had deleted all of her conversations with that individual. She seemed to be acting discreetly, she was in his home, and although I don't believe they slept together, it doesn't matter because I have a strong suspicion that emotional infidelity is taking place. It was this gentleman that came to my house and engaged in conversation with my kid, as well as shaking my hand, among other actions. 
It makes me want to stomp on his stupid skull, but I am restrained since the kids need my assistance at this time. My relationship with her was on the verge of collapsing, and I had been giving her space, allowing her to go out whenever she wanted, and doing my hardest to be a better person when I finally told her she could f asterisk 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 herself and leave me alone, knowing that I would respect her choice to do so. With her behavior, I'm done, cheating is my ultimate limit, and she's crossed it with her attitude. I've reached the end of my rope. Even after all these years, discovering that you have been cheated on is a horrible experience that may have a detrimental effect on your self-esteem. Furthermore, we have three children who are completely reliant on us. I am always thinking about them, which is why I have done all I possibly can to maintain our marriage, but I am starting to fear that there is nothing further that can be done at this time. Her emotional abuse has harmed me to the point that I will never be able to put my trust in another woman again, in my view.